Good evening, everybody. Um, right. Uh, cats run the internet. It's a, it's a known fact. Um, I do research. I do huge amounts of data research. And in doing that, I use lots of computers. The computers we have today, we, 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 very, we like to make ourselves a victim too much sometimes. We think that these companies and these governments have all the power. Well, actually, if you can use a computer well, you have an awful lot of power too. And in fact, the current restrictions we're seeing on computers and encryption and grown intellectual property, it's actually trying to take back the power from the public because they're getting a bit uppity with all this computer power they have. Where I'm standing here is a three and a half thousand year old Bronze Age settlement, and that's Crowton. And that's actually how I got to know Crowton first. I walked across it. But I can tell you what Crowton is, I can tell you what you're looking at, but it wouldn't tell you what it does. And that's because today the function of technology is completely separate from its, its form. The form and function of technology is changing, and it's all about data. Data is the new financial currency. Data is the stuff that whole industries are now being built on. Data is something that you generate, but you do not own. You know, when you are getting something for free, you are not the customer. You are the thing that's being sold. Uh, and that is the new world we're in. Now, data is absolutely meaningless, unless you are able to organise it. What you organise data with is something called metadata. This has been around for many years. What metadata means, data about data. So we take a piece of data. It could be a phone number, it could be a piece of video, it could be a picture, it could be a GPS coordinate, it doesn't matter. It's a piece of data, we describe it. Describing it instantly can get you into trouble, because if you misdescribe it, all the, the military intelligence agencies, they have to annotate all the stuff they collect with metadata. And, and data really is, you have what's called the collection context. That's where it came from, who got it, what sensor was used, because you have to know that to interpret it. But then you have the really dodgy stuff, the information on context. Subject, uh, who is it? Where was it? Does it identify a phone number, somebody's computer? And then you have all these associated bits of data. Because again, data only means something in context with other data. Now, if you're getting confused by this, that's good. Because certainly people who manage companies and huge databases, the reason you get sent somebody else's direct mail shots, or a person who is dead gets a council tax bill, is because they mixed this stuff up. Now, of course, if a council sends a bill to somebody who is dead for their council tax, that's funny. If the Americans send a Hellfire missile into a house, that's not funny. But it's the same kind of mistake you make when you start relying on this stuff. Uh, when you get to what's called machine learning, you have data, you have machine learning, which is where they try and find patterns in the data, that's how advertising agencies work, that's how Cambridge Analytica work. AI takes that to a completely new level. It's not just looking for patterns in the data, it's trying to get a machine to associate meaning. So it's actually combining lots of data together to produce some completely different set of data. And this is the problem. This is what data fusion is. So when we talk about the joint analysis, uh, joint intelligence analysis complex of, of Crowton, there are others around the globe already. What they do is data fusion. They're taking lots of data, attaching other data to it to describe what it is. Then they're trying to relate it to other data. Data fusion then goes one further to try and determine something they might not have known. Um, accountants assess data. People who do logistics assess data. They're assessing data in the past. It's an accountancy exercise. What data fusion does is try and do projections. And any process of projection is in inherently flawed. It's in inherently error-prone. When you have people doing that, 
they can be aware of their errors. Because AI is not intelligent, it just matches data, it can match things which aren't entirely true. This is the problem with AI, it, it fuses data and it isn't necessarily always correct. Why do I know this? Because I do this. This is the process I do. Uh, this is what I produced in 2015 called the Fracogram. This is what data fusion does. I do data fusion. Um, if you go to my website, you put Fracogram in, you get this diagram. This is everybody in the fracking industry in Britain. And this is all the politicians. And these lines are connecting them either for financial, for PR, for academic, whatever. Um, there's two and a half thousand pieces of information in that diagram. Um, it was out of date about a week after I did it. <laughs> the idea of AI is, and data fusion, it will be updated instantaneously. <clears throat> Every time a new piece of data comes in, it will be updated. And that's how they believe they can foretell the world. And literally, every one of these bubbles, you click on it, and you go to another piece of data, which tells you what that bubble is. That's how it works. We won't see this tomorrow, because this is from the top of the hill opposite Crown. It is the best place to see the site. But we couldn't get the bus up there. Um, now, we have the communication centre with its tower, and this is the intelligence centre. And in there, linked to the computers, that's where they run the operations at Crown. But with the Joint Intelligence Analysis Complex, um, what they will be doing is running large amounts of databases. Why? As I said, they're abstracting data. It's huge quantities of data. They can't do that in real time. What they have to do is collect huge amounts of data beforehand for months, if not years. They feed all that data into their big machine learning or AI system, and it learns patterns and it produces those analyses, those lovely pictures, which allow them to view the world. That means that they have to surveil everybody all of the time using as much of the data as they can get. They have, they have to do it, and they can't pick and choose data. They can't decide we're going to be in Djibouti next week, so we will look at Djibouti now. They have to look at Djibouti all the time, collect data all the time, just in case they need to be in Djibouti. And that's the problem with this. They have to collect lots of data, and if you're collecting lots of data all of the time, you need communications links. So we know where Kraken's links are, because ordinary military tenders are publicly advertised. So we know it has links to Mildred Hall, Cheltenham, High Wycombe, Welford, Caution. This is the European North Africa grid. This is um, from some documents that came out about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, and it's about SIPANET and NIPANET. It's the defence communication system. And so there's these cables that go across the Atlantic. Uh, these cables are everywhere. There are a million miles of fibre optic cable going around the planet right now. Yes. This is a book that was published in 1980, called A Technology of Political Control. Um, it taught, this book describes, you know, technology developed to wage a campaign which is neither conventional war nor policing. That is what we have now with drones and with data being used for signature stripes and to track people down and follow them or at least have influence. And the thing about cyberspace and particularly data matching and <coughs> all the, the, net, the data fusion is, it tells you whatever you want to hear. And it's something that um, the Senate, one of these Senate investigation subcommittees looked at 10 years of experience of data fusion, and they produced a report in 2012. And their report was quite clear. It has produced no intelligence of any value. It's skewed. We think the people running these centres are telling us lies because we can't validate anything they say. Um, oh, but we should keep doing it. Because it answers their question, it gives them some idea that they have agency in the world. Yes. And there's some lovely um, reports coming out now about, we're, we're at the birth of AI now. We're at the stage where AI actually means something for the first time since Asimov discussed it in the 1950s. Um, 
The latest one was IBM's debater had a debate with somebody and was judged to have won, well, not won, but won, won, and lost one. It drew. And IBM debater, why does it need to debate? Debate is a way of trying to critically assess evidence and as quickly as possible give a response. Why do they need a machine to do that? Because they need to automate the process of data processing. But of course, um, as Microsoft found out last year, when you plug an AI into Twitter, within a day it becomes a racist misogynist. <laughs> and that's because if you feed it a certain type of data, you get the answer that data indicates. We're not dealing with intelligence, we're dealing with patterns. But what 10, 15 years of data fusion in America, America tells us is some really, some really good works from the ACLU. You get a system that digests large quantities of data. As the Senate subcommittee said, much of it is erroneous data. But it targets anti-war activists. It targets environmental activists. It targets all those people who the people running the system really don't like. There's this lovely paper that came out a few years ago in a journal called Surveillance and Society, which is not a page turner, but um, the prominent goal of domestic security services over the past generation has been to completely remove the distinction between policing and information collection. Over the past decade, this tendency has become unmistakable as a result of the frenzied privatisation of state security under the guise of homeland security. In the bargain, a new agency of political surveillance has arisen, the Fusion Centre. This phenomenon is a medium of both privatisation and assault on ever-shrinking civil liberties in an ever more militarised, ever more insecure society. That is the conclusion of that 1980 book, The Technology of Political Control. And it arrived at that conclusion in 1980, not from a, a detailed analysis of the technology, but from the people who were commissioning it. Because if you build a system, you tend to build your own prejudices into it. Crowd is just one of many sites. All sites are being influenced by this data-centric operation idea. They're all becoming more intrusive, they're all becoming more invasive of civil liberties, of privacy, and of freedom of expression by the menace that they create in society, the idea that everybody's being watched. The big one is that because these data centers don't work within any one place, they're a network, they can actually root data by a pre-selected set of ideas to avoid certain legal jurisdictions. So they're able to, ineffectively, to operate outside the law. And because of this parallel development in the corporate world, there is no distinction between civil and military anymore. It's, it's, there is no dual use, it's all one machine. And for that reason, as peace activists, you've got to start talking to privacy activists. You've got to start talking to people who worry about freedom of expression. You know, that is how we build the peace and conflict message. Not by trying to find interest amongst people who are interested in peace and conflict, but people who are interested in privacy, in expression, in surveillance, in civil liberties, in democracy, because that is what this system is there to influence, is there to preempt. And so, what Kraut is to me now, it's an exemplar of the problem of an unaccountable, opaque system of government. And if we deal with it as that, not as just weapons of war, but Actually, as a system that doesn't work anymore, as we heard somebody say earlier, it's a system that doesn't work, it's politics that doesn't work. Not democracy, it's the politics that arises from it. Then we can make the peace message via all those other people. Any questions? If we have any questions? <laughs>